Uh, just a reminder, please make sure to take a moment to fill out the pledge card and place it in the generosity box. Uh, Pastor Scott would mention this again at the end of the service, but uh, we support our missionaries through these pledges. And so what you bring in, if, if New Life is your home church, if you're not, if New Life is not your home church, just thanks for hanging out with us. But if it is your home church, uh, you know, everyone doing something uh, above your regular ties, above your regular 10%. That's how we support the missionaries like this McClung family here for 21 years. I think we've, we've been a part of what you're doing. And, and Lord, every story that you hear today, um, like if you have been supporting missionaries, like you're a part of this story. And so you are a missionary. You don't even know it. But you're a missionary because you're sending out missionaries. And so thank you for your faithfulness in doing that. But can we please give a warm welcome to our missionaries, the McClungs. Amen. How many of you are glad to be here today? How many of you... Yes, I would rather be here than in any hospital, <laughs> even the best, you know. The presence of the Lord is so fun and so real and so uh, just a lot of times undescribable, but it's also uh, irreplaceable. Uh, I'm going to tell you some stories today. As Pastor mentioned, we're going to give testimony about what God has been doing in Slovakia in our lives. And um, we hope to go back in May of next year and start doing what we were doing in Slovakia to do it in many places in Europe and also our neighbors to the north in Canada. We've had teams come from Canada to Slovakia, see what we're doing. We've, uh, so then we started talking with them and... Um, at first, it's a little rough, but uh, because sometimes they've had Americans come up there uh, and uh, make a muck of things, their words, you know. Anyway, eh? But uh, <clears throat> they, uh, you know, I used, I used to pastor in Ontonagon, and I learned to say that, eh? And uh, so I, I don't know if they picked us because of that or what, but there are about, uh, I thought it was 10 couples, but 14 couples, Patty says, uh, that are that are there, kind of handpicked to go up there. They picked me, um, and I was like, "Lord, you know what did I do wrong? I, I don't want to go to Canada, maybe the Caribbean or the Canary Islands." Or, and uh, I remember telling the Bible school students when I was academic dean of the Bible school and teaching. Uh, I remember telling them, you know, about the call of God, and don't tell God that you're not going to do something, because sure enough. <laughs> so I, I was like praying one day and I thought, and I'm telling the students this, I was praying one day and I thought, hey, Lord, I don't want to go to an island. And then the Holy Spirit, before I could say it out loud, you know, and pray it, is like Iceland's an island. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Lord, I, I'll go wherever you want me. I'll do what. So now I'm getting a taste of that. Um, but there, less than 1% are evangelical Christians in the French-speaking part of Canada. There are many college campuses with 14,000 students and not a evangelical witness of any kind. We've Two missionary families have started to go. We are the first wave of U.S. missionaries to go to, the, to Canada. Uh, and we are doing some things but the, the, they're still on lockdown. They're going to open the border. Then they don't open it. And so we'll just pray for that outreach. But we are going to go back in May to Slovakia. We're going to hopefully connect with teams and go back there and keep doing what we were doing and then start doing it in other countries. And so pray with us about that. But I want to uh, talk to you today. And if you uh, are watching online, you can go to mcclungs.net. And check out a lot of videos. I'm going to just give a little bit about what God has been doing there. And then I'm going to bring the word. And uh, I'm going to enjoy that today. But uh, if you want to go to mcclungs.net. And if you're here today, you can go when you get home. And look at those videos. There are many videos under the video tab uh, there. And you can see several videos of what we've been doing. And as Pastor said, it's a testimony to you. 
and to you and what you've been doing. I want to go to the next slide and uh, talk to you from Acts chapter 10. The angel of the Lord showed up to Cornelius and said, your praying and your giving has come up as a memorial before God. Therefore, send men to Joppa. So then the Holy Spirit goes before uh, those men and starts speaking to Peter. And Peter comes to the realization, and uh, thankfully we can have bacon today. <laughs> and ham. Okay, I'm not supposed to have so much fat, so I'll have ham. But anyway, but he realized, and as it says there, that God accepts every from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. I realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. I'm so glad for that today. And God chose that family because they were devout, God-fearing family, non-Jewish family. And he had to deal with Peter, that Peter was going to be the messenger. And poor Peter, he didn't even get his sermon finished. And the Holy Spirit fell on them people. And, uh, they, you know, I don't know if the Holy Spirit falls or he rises or... But anyway, they began to speak in other tongues as he was, as the spirit gave them utterance. They were Gentiles and the brothers that were with him realized that God is pouring out his spirit on the Gentiles. I'm glad that we have that today. But what was the key? He prayed and he gave. Why did God pick him? Because of his devout worship to the Lord. And folks, that's where God wants to bless us. He wants to pour out his spirit in a new way, in a fresh way on us. It's new for us. It's not new to him. But he wants to do that on everybody, everywhere. Whether it's in Slovakia or if it's Escanaba or a 906 in the whole UP and all of the US. God cares about all of us and he knows all of us by name. And he values us. He values us. One of the clamors of this world is, is that, the, that uh, you're worthless, you're no good. And, and our flesh bears witness with that because in and of ourselves, we are not any good. But then Jesus says, I love you. I care for you. I came to give you life. And so let's believe God and let's get into what he has for us. And then we see Paul in Philippians 4, chapter 17 uh, chapter 4, verse 17 through 19. He's telling them in the previous verses how that he went to Macedonia. He went to Thessalonica. And they prayed and they gave so that he could go and preach. And there was great things happening. And he says, I'm not looking for another gift. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. And so on these testimonies today, I'm telling you, are credited to your account here at New Life Assembly in Escanaba. They're credited to your account. And so when you give and when you fill this out, this helps the pastors and the staff to realize, and the missions committee to realize what they can do to help us missionaries to go and preach. It empowers us. We can't do it without you. But we also, if we had all the money we needed and nobody was praying for us, it wouldn't work either. So we need people to pray and we need people to give. And so these offerings that you're giving are a fragrant offering. As Paul tells the church in Philippi, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Let's go to the next uh, slide. This is what God has been doing. He's been moving in Slovakia. And this is testimonies from your praying and giving, Patty and I going and preaching and working with teams. We built up a team in Slovakia and we built up, brought teams from the U.S. and Canada to help minister to the Roma or Gypsy people in Slovakia. There's 5.5 million people in Slovakia, 500,000 of them are Roma people. They are below the poverty line. There's 90% unemployment among the Gypsy Roma people, and they are despised. Every week in the news media, they are talked down. They are told all the things about what the Gypsy people are doing bad, and oh yeah, there's another this and another that, and it always, always, always putting them down. But God loves them. 
and he's raised us up. We work in a Slovak church. I'm the international pastor. We work with international students from all over the world. And uh, they come to Košice to study because there's four parts of the university that are in English. Uh, most of them are med students and become doctors. We had several of them come from our groups, have graduated, and are doctors and doing their internship and then now are in practice at several places. And it's so good to see those folks and to be a blessing to those folks. But they go from there. And still living there are these folks, the uh, gypsy people, and they prefer to be called Roma. They're Romani from India. They migrated to Europe for a, a thousand years ago. And we even have uh, gypsy Roma people here in the United States. Um, I heard of a, a friend of mine said in Arkansas, his, they had gypsy people in their church. Um, and God loves all of us, right? Remember, he spoke to Peter that everybody from every nation, he loves them and he's got a plan for them. So God has called us to go, but he brings the increase. So these testimonies aren't Patty and Wendell. They're not uh, to say, look what we have done. This is what to say, look what we have done. They're your testimonies and God gets the glory. Let's go to the next slide. Because we do these community events, we follow up with doing uh, ministry to those families that we've invited to these community events. We follow up with them. The same volunteers that gave them an invitation to our event, then we get that invitation back and we give it back to the church leaders and they go out and they canvas back the areas and they talk to them about what it meant to them. They've heard the word of God, some of these for the first time in their lives. They felt the presence of God, some of these for the first time in their life. They have felt the love of God and God speak to them that they are valuable for the first time in their lives. And sometimes we've had in, in a tent, we'll have, we've had several times where every person in the chairs got up and came forward at the altar call to give their life to Christ. It's been so awesome. Then we follow up with that and building, doing construction teams to build churches. We've got seven projects going right now. Two of them need to break ground. Uh, two of them need to finish. And uh, the other, that's seven, some of them, four. <laughs> that four of them are uh, in the middle and hope to finish a couple of them next year. But, and then, as I mentioned, go to the university students. But the whole thing is to make disciples, to make it sustainable, so that if the missionaries have to come home because of COVID, it continues and uh, today I'm a little jealous because what we've been doing, making these connections with local vendors, with warehouses and stuff to get food and then distribute it at these community events, our pastors now are doing that while we're gone. And we've been able to send money to give to them so that they can do that. And our Slovak churches have been given money because, see, the society doesn't like them in such a way, in such so bad that they have blamed the spread of COVID on the gypsy people. And so they put the National Guard around their communities and don't let them leave. So the term lockdown takes a whole different meaning. But our pastors are able to come and go out of those communities. Thank you, Jesus. And they're going in there and they're loving on people. They're giving them food because you're praying and giving. And so we're going to continue to pray for them. They just got locked down in, uh, about a week ago, and it's uh, really bad again. There was an ease up in August, and now it's in October. It's, it's gotten worse again, and so they're cracking down. But God's still showing his love to them, and we're able to continue to do that. We'll go to the next slide. This is a community, what a community looks like, an event. There's fences. We give invitations. So we do an hour time where we bring them in and we give them food and tent number one. Again, they're all below the poverty line. Most of them don't have jobs. They find jobs here and there and get cash, but they don't have anything about benefits or anything like that. They get about $300 per family of welfare. And uh, then uh, and that doesn't last long because it's about 25% higher cost of living in Slovakia than it is here uh, in, the, in the upper Midwest. But 
the Lord is working and he loves them and he cares for them. And so we do these community events and we feed them when they come in. They're greeted by the same people that gave them the invitation. We have tent number two is for kids church. We used to bring teams in to do kids church. Now we've raised up and trained uh, gypsy leaders and they're doing the kids church and they're seeing their own people reach out with them and tell them I was once this way felt worthless was no good and now God showed me that he loves me and he cares for me and he's got great plans for me he set me free and we have so many testimonies of being set free of healings of this one guy came started coming to a church and uh, he I, I saw him and I he was wearing a suit he got it obviously at a secondhand store, but he's wearing this suit. And I said, hey, I, I don't know that guy. He said, oh, I got to tell you. Pastor Igor was telling me. He said, that guy, he, he, he got a report from the, from the doctors that he has cancer. So he came to church, started coming to that church. And he said, and they prayed over him, went back to the doctor. And the doctor said, I, I don't understand it. He don't have cancer anymore. <laughs> He was healed because they found that God loves them. They found out that God loves them. So these community events, then when they leave, we give them bags of food. We order fresh bread and we give them bags and they leave and go home and we give them a Bible. Right now we only have the New Testament in their language. One of the ladies that got saved, got a Bible, went home and showed up at church and talked to Pastor Marek and said to Marek, Pastor, I didn't know. I, I, I thank you for the Bible. I, I, and, and, and I'm giving my life to Christ. And she says, you know, I, I, I just cried out to God. And then I started reading the Bible in my language. And I, she says, I didn't know that God knew my language. How many Bibles do you have at your house? How many study helps? How many? We're working on the Old Testament to get it in their language. But God speaks their language. Amen. Amen. He knows their names and he loves them. And thank God for that. And so we, this is what we do at these community events. Uh, here's another. If you look at the next slide, uh, this church started out with a small church building. You can see there. And... Um, then we did a community event on Saturday, Sunday morning. They had 100 first-time visitors at that little church. And the next Sunday, eight days later, there was 200, over 200 people showed up at that little place. So they moved up the hill to this building. And you can see kind of what it looked like in the bottom. I have to turn around left-hand side. <laughs> and uh, you can see that, that um, they ran an extension cord from that little house up there. And they started having church and today, and we've had teams come, we've had money come, and me and some other leaders put the, uh, the roof on there. And we then uh, had other teams come and do the inside, and now they run about 200 or plus people uh, and have a great thriving church because you're praying and because you're giving. This is what it turns out. It really, really adds up, and God multiplies it. And you can see the other bottom picture on the, the right-hand side that uh, there's a water baptism. This was their second water baptism that year. They baptized 98 people. These are people that have given their life to Christ and started, started following him. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to just get people saved and say, oh, look at how many people got saved. We want to make disciples. We want them plugged into local churches. And it's been, been a great, great time. We'll go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so this is your testimony. Over 20 community events that we've done, over 2,000 people have come to Christ since 2013. We have planted five churches. Again, we have seven church uh, projects to build. We've started small groups and had churches grow from 50 to over 200 because of your praying and your giving. Thank you so much for doing that. We can't do it without you. God is moving in this place. He's moving here in Escanaba and the UP, and he's moving in the United States, and the devil's getting worried. That's why you hear all of the noise. You hear all the noise that's going on. And I was just realizing this week, 
something else is going on. God is moving. That's why the world is making so much noise. So I want to talk to you from the word of God today about three things. And pastor challenged me to bring the word. We'll go to the next slide. To bring the word today, and I was a little put back by that. I was like, man, I want to be, I'm a missionary. I want to talk about missions. And, uh, and sometimes I just ramble on and on. And so, but I, in, in praying about it, and the pastor was uh, clear uh, that I needed to bring the word and what he wanted me to say, uh, th- this theme about unmasking the devil. And I believe that I'm here to speak, and it's not an accident for this day, October 31st, 2021, Somebody needs to hear this. And it was hopefully if you will exp- uh, accept what God is saying to you and take it into practice and put it into practice, take it home with you. God's going to change your life. It's going to make a big difference as we've seen thousands come to Christ and lives and whole families change. He can change you, too. He loves you, too. Amen. So the first thing is, is that God is truth. Jesus says in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, he is life. He is truth. He's the only way. The devil will say there's many other ways. So we're going to see who God is, and we're going to see who the devil is, and we're going to see who we are. And our choice makes a difference in who we are. If we follow God, then we're going to be a lot way different than if we follow the enemy and and give into that temptation. Okay, the devil is a liar. Somebody say amen. amen. The devil is full of lies. He lied to Eve and there's been consequences ever since. The pleasure of sin lasts for a season. But the consequences of that sin last for a lifetime. If we don't repent. But our father is waiting for us. God is waiting for us. To forgive us at any moment. If we will come back to him. And say forgive me. I Forgive me. I confess my sin. And repent. As pastor mentioned last week. We need to know the times. And see that what's going on. But we also need to realize. In 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name. Will turn from their wicked way. Call, seek my face. And I'll hear from heaven. Folks, we can do that. He's not talking about the world. He says, my people. Now, some of that can be the people that are yet to come to Christ. But he's really speaking to us today here in 2021. He spoke to the children of Israel. Now that we are in Christ, we're part of the children of Israel and the family of God. And who are we? If we follow the truth, we are free. Whom the sun sets free, he is free indeed. And we sang it in that song, we are free. God has set us free from darkness and given us the light. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next uh, slide. That God is truth and God is light. Now the devil comes as an angel of light. It says it here. In verse uh, chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, verse 14. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. They had, had some prophets come into the church and say that they were this, that, or the other. And uh, Paul is calling them out and saying they are false prophets. They're deceitful workers. They masquerade as apostles, but they're not. And then he says, and no wonder. And I want to put in there a little... Uh, comment, uh, commentary that no wonder because they are inspired of the devil, the devil, Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. There are temptations that come. You know, I've seen a lot of commercials about uh, the uh, uh, horror pictures that are showing. I hate those things. And um, my kids found out when they were teenagers that they could scare dad. And I jump and scream like a little girl. Oh, they just thrilled their soul. And I didn't have peace until they moved out. (laughs) But now my grandkids have found out. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so I got a little ways to go, another 10, 15 years of that. But anyway, 
we can recognize when it's gory and scary that, yeah, that's evil, that's evil. But when the devil comes as an angel of light, we're like, oh, wait a minute. There's things that get our attention that bear witness in our flesh. But we need to know the truth. You know, I, I remember bankers telling me that they, how do, they, how do you um, know what something's counterfeit? They said, we study the original, the real, and so that when it, we know it front and back, upside down and sideways, so that when the fake comes, we'll know it. When counterfeit comes, we'll know it. And that's the way it is with us Christians. We need to study the word of God, need to pray and know the presence of God so that when the enemy comes, even though he's dressed like the angel of light, we can recognize it and say no. But there are some people that uh, aren't praying and aren't reading the word and have given in. I want you to know you can come back today. God is ready. The devil, he'll tempt you to sin and then he'll condemn you for sinning. And he just wraps the chains around you and you think there is no way out. But I'm telling you, Jesus is the way out. Jesus wants to give you life. He wants to set you free. He died so you could be set free. He died so that you could have this life, that you could have this light. And I just love this in John. John chapter 1. In him was life. And he's talking about Christ, the Messiah, Jesus. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. The darkness cannot overcome the light. Just a little bit of light. Let the light in and God will help you and to set you free and get you back on there. Get you back on the right track. Two years ago, I started a new prayer time in January. This year, I doubled down on that same prayer time. So I'm going to do double of that. And then we've been through a lot of things. <clears throat> but God has been faithful. And I know that I've been through some things have gone a lot easier because I doubled down on that prayer. Some of us have, have slacked off on praying. Let's double down on praying. Our community, our world, the UP needs that we could pray for them. They need us praying for them. Gee, what do we have? We have life. So God gives us life and light. The devil gives us darkness and death. What are we going to choose? It seems simple. And it is. Let's choose light. Let's recognize through prayer, through reading the word, what is truth and what is lie. We'll go to the next slide and say to you that God is love. God is love. Dear friends, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Amen. We don't want to read the next verse, though. <laughs> Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Amen. There was a song. I don't think it was a Christian song, but it was a song that said what the world needs now is love. And folks, our world could use a lot of love. God is love. The devil is hate. He's the accuser. He divides. He deceives. But God brings unity. He loves us. He wants us to love one another. He empowers us to love one another because in our flesh, we cannot love one another. And we can look right next door to our spouse and realize that. Because sometimes I, I feel like that, uh, sometimes I have bad thoughts about Patty. I know you, can, uh, you, you can't believe it. <laughs> but uh, there's moments that I'm walking in the flesh and I just, have, but I say to myself, look, I am not going to be a vessel of the accuser of the brethren. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and, all, and the authority of his Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. He has come for the accuser. That's the devil, Satan, Lucifer. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters 
who's a, who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Isn't that great? I can just see God is puking him out. Get out of here. <laughs> He's just hurled him down. We're taking kids to camp. I was driving through uh, from, U- from Ontonagon, going down to Lake Helen, going to camp. And the back of the van, I'm driving, so the boys are going nuts and, uh, from, from church. And I think my son was part of that group. And they, they all decided that they were going to try have a, a, uh, a uh, Mountain Dew drinking thing. They were going to see how fast they could drink. He's going to hurl. <laughs> oh, man, I pulled over and blah, out on the side of the road. Thankfully, it didn't get in my van. But, oh, man, the devil has been hurled out of our lives and out of our way because Jesus is our Lord. He's our Messiah. That's who he is. And that's who we are if we will give our lives to him. Give our season of our life, wherever we are and whatever we're going through, God wants to walk with it through us, uh, walk through it with us. He is here, whether we feel it or not, whether we see it or not. He is moving in our lives, and He loves us. The devil hates us. He's the accuser. He doesn't want to do anything good. And so, the, who does that make us then? If we follow Christ, who does that make us? We'll go to the next slide. Thank you. We are overcomers. We are overcomers in his name. The musicians are going to come, and I want to close with this, that we are overcomers in his name. But we need to put on the full armor of God so that we can continue to stand. And then we'll go to the next slide. We need to pray for each other. As Paul tells the church in Ephesus, He says, we need to stand and put on the full armor of God, pray in the spirit on all occasions and all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people, all of the Lord's people. And he says, pray for me. That so struck me. We need to pray for the apostle Paul, the people at Ephesus and and, and, when a missionary comes, you think, man, they've, got, they've seen 2,000 people come to Christ. They've seen, they're building five churches, seven churches and five new church plants. Folks, we need your prayers. In 2013, January 1st, 2013, Patty had cardiac arrest. She was in a coma for 26 hours. The doctor told me if she lives... She will have serious brain damage. She was non-responsive and in a coma. And we put out a prayer request. And like when they lowered the man through the roof, his few close friends, their faith. I didn't have any faith. I was done. I, I, I had nothing left in me. I cried out to God. And you prayed for us. Many people prayed around the world were praying for Patty. And Galen Hendrickson came from the dist- district or network office down in Wapaka to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She was in Sacred Heart Hospital. He tried to, t- Galen tried to talk to Patty. She was non-responsive. And then he, he uh, said, okay, let's pray. So we had Patty's hands. We bowed our heads and he prayed. And then he said, in Jesus' name, amen. And we opened our eyes and Patty is looking at us. She doesn't remember that. She doesn't, didn't have an out-of-body experience. She, didn't, she doesn't remember any of it. And then Galen said, Hi, Patty, you're in the hospital. Can you squeeze my hand? Because I told him that she had been non-responsive. She starts squeezing his hand. Then she squeezed my hand. And the nurse saw that and said, All right, boys, get out of here. We're going to do the test. Because they can't do any tests until then. Because the neurologist had told me after two minutes, brain damage starts when full cardiac arrest her heart had stopped completely and after five minutes it's usually irreversible and there's over 10 minutes your wife was gone without this electricity so then Galen came and prayed and then Galen left and he didn't hear the story for another two years what was the rest of the story and so the cardiologist took Kara and I my daughter and I into a consultation room do not disturb over the door and said uh, started talking. I don't know what he said, 
But then he shut the door, he sits down, and then bang, bang, there's a knock at the door, and the neurologist came back in. He said, you know those statistics I gave you, two and five? He said, it, it's years of statistics, decades, and thousands of patients. So when we did the first brain scan on Patty, it just couldn't be true, so we did a second one. But I need to tell you that your wife is going to have a full recovery. And there is no, absolutely no brain damage. And folks, that's because people are praying for us. And that's because of your faith, your testimony. Amen. So pray for us. And pray for Slovakia. And help us to go back and to see great, greater things happen. We love you and thank you for allowing us to speak today. And God bless you. Oh, man, thank you for sharing with us today. I'm going to ask uh, Wendell and Patty to come up here. And I think, uh, could I have a couple of the ladies from our missions committee? I think you guys are in here. Would you join us up here as well? And we want to pray for them today. Thank you. I'm just kind of speechless, like listening to everything. I mean, obviously what you shared at the beginning and everything God is doing. And, um, but man, just thank you for your openness, your transparency, um, and for speaking in boldness. Uh, the, you know, Pastor Jason kind of took you a little bit out of your comfort zone or caught you off guard. And, and so thank you for doing that because God is really ministering to our hearts today. And uh, thank you guys. Let's pray for them today. Heavenly Father, we uh, lift Patty and Wendell up to you right now. We thank you for their ministry, Lord God, to these uh, people. Um, it's just uh, the hearts that, Holy Spirit, you have prepared to receive the message of Christ. And uh, you, you, you go ahead before them. You, you are blazing trails. And uh, they have responded in obedience to do your work. Um, and, and you are just continuing to bless that and to, to pour out your spirit, to change lives. And uh, just to watch the effect of that, um, not just today, but the things that are going to happen years down the road in the lives of people. Uh, these are the things that change nations. And uh, so we just pray that you continue that work. And uh, we thank you for the continued health and Patty. Uh, and man, just that miraculous healing that took place uh, in her body, Lord God. You are our healer. You are our healer and our restorer. And we thank you for that testimony, Lord God, that is going to minister to so many people. Would you continue to bless them and their work, Lord God, and help us as a church to continue to lift them up and be supportive through prayer and through our finances. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.